There she is. Another episode of Real Time. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb bitch. <laughs> What's up, Pep? I, I just uh, saw your nice story. And you're just always saying such sweet things about me. You're so, you're so kind. <laughs> I have nothing but nice things to say about you. Welcome. Thanks for Hi. being thanks for being the second guest on Real Talk Radio, a, a place for creative brains to discuss life, art, and music that inspires. Do you like what? that tagline? That, that's a good one, actually. Yeah. I'm, I'm really bad with that kind of stuff. So, congrats. I mean, I just <laughs> kept it as, as simple as humanly possible. It, it has room for improvement. So, if you have creative <laughs> feedback later, you just let me know. For Cheers, sure. cheers, baby. Mm. Boink. Boink. What are you drinking? Looks like water, tastes like tequila. Holy, it's just straight up tequila? Um, there was ice in it and it melted. <laughs> oh, I was like, wow. That's like badass even for me. Like, It's actually <laughs> not tequila, it's mezcal. That's what I drink as well. I know, you know what? You tried to get me on it years ago and I hated it and I've always hated it. And then I started liking it like, well, it was when I was in Mexico, that makes sense, but. Yeah. Um, it's just, um, it's, it's, a uh, it's like a, one of the finer things in life. You know, you don't need to be like chugging on it every day, but it's a nice smoky treat. Mm-hmm. Aperol, <laughs> Aperol though, that's one that's going to take me a minute. You and so many of my friends always give me shit when I say I don't like it. So Campari is, I like it better Campari, but mm-hmm. we get all of our shit from total wine because they like give you hella deals. So there's this liqueur called Azuro that we found and it's like this midway between Aperol and Campari where it's like oh. not way too herbal or it's not way too sweet like Aperol. So I just think you need to warm up to, do you it's like t- herbal stuff? It tastes like medicine to me, bro. It tastes like the shit uh, that you put in water that you chug bef- like when you're sick from an airplane or something. But you know what? Okay, I can, I can drink it if it's daytime and like if I'm in Italy. <laughs> it tastes better and there's actually a really cool bar in Milan it's like right next to the Duomo yeah. you've been the Aperol yeah, place yeah I've been there yeah <laughs> that's the only time I've enjoyed Aperol but I'd, I also had already like had a few drinks before then so I didn't I it could have been cough medicine for all I knew and I, was, I didn't, didn't care it. yeah <laughs> you think that place is like really kitschy but it's actually cool right yeah it's cool I mean the drinks are like a billion dollars but besides yeah. that you would expect it. It's the center of the city, blah, blah, well, blah. Well, good thing we're freaking trillionaires. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Uh... <laughs> I'm just going to hit up that last $100 royalty check that I got to pay for my drink. <laughs> On that note, I should I should introduce you to my, my lovely listeners. Okay. Um, okay, so this beautiful specimen today is Miss Caitlin Epperly, known as Everly, artistically, or how I call her Pepperfly. Which is oh God. is a nickname that has no no logical sense, but it it sticks. So, she is a singer songwriter performer from Iowa. By the way, does that make you an Iowan or an Iowa? Yeah. Okay, I was like, is does that make her an Iowoni Iowonian? I think I was thinking like it's, Ionian scale. I don't know. It's it's Iowan. Yeah. Okay, Iowan. It's, it's, proper term yeah so your career really began probably on the og american idol season nine right Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. catapulted her into the spotlight pretty quickly and uh she used her platform from the get-go for positive change becoming an early advocate for the lgbtq community she is one of the most magnetic magnetic personalities of anyone i know and i think it really transcends through her work and i'm certainly not the only person that fangirls over her she has many people that feel the same way and she's recently been recognized when she wrote the music for uh, California Christmas, which went number one on Netflix, which she also makes an appearance in. So hell yeah. Um, and to give you guys the full scope of this talent, we're going to go ahead and play an original by Everly. And this song is called For the Crowd. We're back. <laughs> Great song. I love that song. The people want more you. from you. You're going to release some new stuff soon, I hope. Yeah. You know what you um, know what I want to hear. 
Oh, you let me take you home. So Caitlin loves to send me like little clips from her songs. And she wrote this song like years ago. And just out of the blue, I'll be driving somewhere. And just out of the blue, we'll just send her a voice note of me singing this song. Because I think it's so good. Like, I can't wait for this shit to drop. <laughs> this is a total testament to my like procrastination. It, that, and that's not even the proper word. Just like me not being able to ever finish something. Like, do you ever... I think it's almost the worst when you come up with something really good and it's and it's the first part of what you come up with, right? It's not like you came up with a verse that's okay before that. Like, I came up with that hook and I was like, this hook is fire. It makes me want to cry and it gives me so many feelings. And then that's what makes me shelve it, which is mm-hmm. ridiculous. But it's like, I'm so afraid to touch it after mm-hmm. that and to like screw it up in some way that it's like in some odd way, it's better for me to just leave. <laughs> alone which makes no sense because then no one ever hears it this is Um, the thing though but yeah just what always helps me when I get like that is to actually make an intention of to write okay so you already have a bomb ass hook so you're missing like the verses the arrangement whatever so just go into to it saying I'm gonna write a shit the rest of it's gonna be shit I already know the hook is great so I'm just gonna write a shit thing for the rest of it and then once you actually have this shit thing, you can then see where it needs to be polished. The problem uh-huh. is, is before you have anything, you can't improve on it. So actually, you know, I think Ed Sheeran, of all people, had this uh, had this interview once where he kind of said something similar, but his was more in the terms of like when you start getting back into writing or writing in the beginning, and he likened it to a faucet. When you turn a faucet on, it's just like muddy water at first until it runs clear. So it's kind of what you have to do. Like just just put the first idea out, any idea, so you have something that you can then sculpt, you know. But uh-huh. you're not going to write shit because you're not a shit writer. Thank but, you. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> I had to say, though, I was I was looking up things uh, for your intro. <laughs> and I was like, because I was like, what season was she, blah, blah, blah. So I ended up finding this article on MTV <laughs> about you um, it, it yeah. interviewed you and this is like a week after you had just performed and the headline of this article is Caitlin Epperly had quote pride issues with being on American Idol and then like the first quote from you <laughs> is a talent competition is not necessarily my thing <laughs> <laughs> that's so true though being an honest person that's what you get for being honest honest dude i love that shit that's so you i could just like see dad, you being on stage me, and you know my dad and i like we have many differences but my dad he's my dad he knows me at my core i grew up with the guy so he's like you know he's like it's never been your thing like even my my dad knows this he's like you always did it because that's what you had to do when you were in high school to like get accolades and you know further your your talent and and your knowledge that was kind of how they put education and you know that's how music worked you went to competitions right Mm -hmm. um but I never liked it I'm like it was so weird to me to compare myself to other people who are completely different from me I never got that I'm like yeah okay if you're trying out like I had to do the whole classical opera thing right like you had to do that in order to do all the other things the school I went to um, so I get that because it's just literally all technique and just, you know, but when it comes to like being an artist and like, <laughs> like, how can you tell me that I like, and, and I won these competitions and I still don't like them. Like I would, I won best female, uh, uh, jazz vocalist in the state two years in a row when flex, I was bitch, in high flex, school. Flex, bitch. <laughs> right in Iowa. Sorry, I'll, add, I'll go saying. back and add that to the intro. Also, best female <laughs> jazz vocalist in high school, junior and sophomore year. <laughs> Sorry, the flex, all I'm saying is that it's a testament to how much I don't like them. It's just right. like, I don't well, get it. I because it's, it's, silly. Like, it's like, I mean, yeah, art, art shouldn't be a competition. It is, it's all right. about being unique. But, you know, I actually have a few friends that uh went on these uh competitions these reality competitions and Uh you really actually made the most of it like it was I think it was very apparent that you went on to it for one reason like you weren't trying to win or be the best singer you were just trying to be like what's up I'm Caitlin you know and Uh it definitely it definitely did a lot for you 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 like really cultivated an audience that has stuck with you and 
like seen you through because I mean you are who you are and and that was another thing I I was thinking of so we met in Nashville you've in Los Angeles now but we met in Nashville and Nashville is very much the Bible Belt it, I don't know it might be it's gotten a little better but I remember when we were there it was like I would get people saying to me all the time like my my critiques which I never asked for your critiques but you know when I was on stage They'd unwarranted like, obviously yeah. you know you're a little too sexy on stage and i'd be like that sounds like a you problem i'm sitting up there holding a guitar you know what i mean but you were next level like you gave no fucks you would be out there and this was before yeah. miley this was before miley was doing this you would go out yeah. there and like a little jacket and take the jacket off and there would be like barely anything covering your nipples and you're like ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that girl, my friend. <laughs> and but We you know, definitely became friends because we were unapologetic ourselves. Yeah, exactly. But if it was exactly. in a different way, you know? Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, man, it's been, it's been great watching how your talent has, you know, how you've taken on different angles, though, and, like, gotten into the writing, and you're still releasing music and now living out in Los Angeles. And what do you uh -huh. think, like, what, how would you compare – uh the music scene from nashville to <clears throat> la i mean i know uh, your, your your story is a little different because you really dove more into the writing side of things and less performing when you went out to los angeles right 100 percent. yeah yeah i barely performed honestly i was it's funny i was just about to start that whole thing like from scratch with all my new material i performed in february of 2020 for my first time and like in forever uh, just That's a right. little acoustic show, little little yeah. bar, and the next month everything shut down. Yeah. And really, honestly, I think it was. I mean, COVID was not a blessing, but I'm just saying, you know, when you're trying to find silver linings and things, um, like it was, it really forced me to reevaluate. And I love performing, but like I've kind of realized that I a little bit prefer to be behind the scenes of things sometimes. Like, I don't always want to be on the forefront. I will sometimes. You know, there's plenty of writers and producers and, uh, you know, all sorts of people that make music that have their own projects that they do and whatever. But I love to write more than anything. And, and especially now that I'm getting older, I'm a little bit more, like, secure in who I am and I know how the industry is. I have a little less desire to go through that whole machine of people telling you who to be and what they want from you and what they, how they want to mold you, like, I, it was hard to mold me when I was 20. It's definitely hard to mold me 10 years later, you know? Yeah, and I also think that's another reason why you and I I connected so easily because we both, I mean, being a female in the music industry is just something you really can't, you'd have to write a couple books before you really can get across the full message of the shit that you have to go through. And you uh -huh. and I went through it for sure. And I think that's- It's a man's world too. Like, oh, it totally is. But like also it's yeah. like a man's world where- they want, like you said, they want to mold you. Like, this is how, we're, we're, it's our responsibility to present you to the public, and this is how we think you should be as a woman. And, like, mm -hmm. I know you and I are allergic to that kind of shit. Um, yeah. And so, it's, yeah, it's never been like, oh, you want me to be that? Okay, cool. Like, fuck off. It's never been like, oh, like, th that's the key to get me there? I'll do it. Because that's, there's mm -hmm. nothing really worth giving up your artistry. You know, your artistry is your individuality. That's what we, like, that's what we fight to be. That's freedom for us. So I think that's mm -hmm. another thing that we've always connected on is neither of us have really been ever willing to do that. Yeah. And honestly, too, like, we forget how much has changed in the last decade. Mm -hmm. Like, like, we were in the thick of when things were like, things are still very male dominated. Like, you know, because I'm out in LA, and I'm doing a lot with movies and stuff. And like, you know, my boyfriend's a producer for films and so I'm very intertwined in this world I actually worked at a studio for a couple of years um but like you know just like for example the DGA the Directors Guild of America which is all of the film directors who, who they have to you know register with in order to work in the union it's only 16 percent women still like so imagine how bad it was 10 years ago you know what I mean? It's just so, and, and we really kind of during college grew up when all of like, that was before me too. And before all of that shit, like when things were still, you know, normalized a lot more as far as like you had to go into it. Like how intimidating is that to go into a studio and you're literally the only woman, everyone else that's doing everything else, all the other musicians, the engineers, the producers, everyone are, is, a, is a man. 
and well all, and also know, there's that there's that aspect of like i don't think what people fully understand when you say intimidating um like not intimidating in the sense of like you know you feel inferior which i know is a thing for some women but i think it's more of that like sexual undercurrent that you're always wary yeah. of like is it really my talent that you're so attracted to that's always a question and so yeah. it kind of it, for me it breeded me to be extremely callous and so a lot of people are always like whenever I meet a man that's the first and, and when it's business related at all the first face that they get is just cold hard like straight to the like point eyes. Yeah, yeah like don't you know like don't beat around the bush like what like you know there's like don't even really text me don't use emojis when you text me be very business like be you know you, uh-huh. and we have to be like that because we've been through some shit <laughs> you yeah know? and it, it it's true it's true um so sorry to kind of circle back because your original question was the la scene compared to the nashville scene um so i guess from what i know because i never that's the difference is when I came out here, it was kind of like when I went to Nashville, but in a different way. Like when I went to Nashville, I went there for school at first. I went to Belmont and it, I was literally all business. Like I went to one college party in the three years that I attended Belmont and it was at the very end and I did it just to say that I did it. Um, I was very much so about just getting it done. So when I came out to LA, it was the same thing. It's like, I'm here to work. Like I'm here to figure it out. And I did right away. Um, But so I didn't really get to like dive into the fun part like I did in Nashville of like going out and like seeing new artists and kind of like being your own little A&R in the city in a sort of retrospect where you find the artists that you love and that you follow yourself. And that was a part that I loved about Nashville. Now, I will say that the big difference that I didn't think would be a thing is that actually I find that people in L.A. tend to be more supportive than people were in Nashville. Really? Yeah, huh, that's interesting. I know. And I maybe it's just the circles that I've run with mm-hmm. since I've been here, you know, because there's millions of people in the city. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm giving a very small sliver of a perspective. Right, of course. Your experience, though, it's valid. Sure, sure. Um, but, yeah, I just noticed, like, yeah, I mean, people are less, like, uh, maybe they are silently, I guess, but, like, <laughs> people seem to be less willing to either judge or to be intimidated by you Hmm. rather than seeing you as like, Oh, maybe you're an asset actually. Like maybe we can work together to build this empire in some sort of way. What do you have that I don't have? And what do I have that you don't have? Mm -hmm. And let's mix these worlds and try to make something fucking great. Where in Nashville, it felt very like, I think it was because it was so small, honestly, It's and which you would think it would be the opposite, but it's almost like women always viewed other women as competition mm-hmm. instead of like, how can we really work together? That's how it always felt. It always felt a little bit icky and a little bit fake. And I can't believe that like I never had a session with all of these women writers that I knew out in Nashville. I'm like, I never had one session with any of them. Yeah. Why? Like we're both we're both talented. Like why don't we just? But I, honestly, that was before like the whole collab thing became more normalized too like five years ago it kind of became more normal is like that was actually a way that artists be like uh like for example Billie Eilish and Khalid oh, right. did about that, about a that. song like forever ago right and it was because Khalid was on the up and up and so was Billie Eilish yeah and so like they were like oh let me bring you in front of my fans and I'll bring you that? in front of my I don't even remember. What That's a good that? question. Um, <laughs> and I don't know the answer. <laughs> uh, it is called Lovely. Oh, wow. Isn't it lovely that you have the internet at your disposal like that? Um, um, yeah. <laughs> what it, how does it go? All I can think of is, uh, isn't she lovely? <laughs> That's I'm looking I can't at you. remember either. It's really bad. It's, but it's it's one of those really. It's a super Billy type of song. It's like very minimal and, you know. Well, actually, I guess I, I that that's a good segue to reveal sort of the theme of today's conversation. Mm. So Everly is. I mean, she's a very multifaceted writer, but she's definitely a pop princess from as long as I've known her. So I figured it would be a cool episode to sort of really put our finger on the pulse of what is the pop music at this current moment and so we decided on a few pop artists 
that are like really in the spotlight right now and we're gonna play some of their songs and sort of just give our two cents on them like you all care to hear I know that's why you're here <laughs> so should we start with the first one yeah let's okay go. so our first artist is Lil Nas X Ooh. yeah <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Caitlin and I both have a very similar opinion about him. Um, let's start by playing. Uh, let's start by playing your song, shall we? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Caitlin's pick is his newest single, um, which is wait I didn't write it down actually. What is it? Industry baby. Industry baby, love it. Okay, which mm -hmm. I actually heard because you sent me the music video, so I heard it for the first time with the music video and. Uh, that's we'll clutch to watch with the music video. It's like sure. very necessary. Yeah. So we will go <laughs> ahead and play that now. Ah! It's a pretty dope ah, song. So good. So why did so, you why did you pick that song? Well, first of all, like I went through and listened to I mean he doesn't have like a ton of songs, you know? He's fairly new and he's also not one who's just been like he doesn't, he's, he's a fucking Gen Zer. He puts out singles, not huge records. You know what I mean? Um, Ooh, good but point. I, I, I picked it because you can tell this is like, this is Lil Nas's like next, he has just upped his game. Like, so the, the producers on this are take a day trip and Kanye West. What? Kanye produced he, this? Yeah. I didn't so, realize. So take a take a day trip. They they produce all of the ones that like I really fuck with, like the Rodeo and like all like the ones with like heavy bass. Like you can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the really kind of trappish sort of shit. And then this one, they got Kanye on it, and like Good you move. can just hear the progression of like how much like they're upping his game as mm -hmm. as he moves forward, you know, and. Also, anyone listening, like, you have to watch the video. That was, like, if I didn't so see good. the video, it wouldn't have probably had the same effect at all. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of gorgeous black and brown men dancing naked in a shower. Because he goes to prison. I mean, it's a whole sploof on sploof. Spoof? Is that what the word? Oh, man, I would have just whole... ran with sploof. I like that. <laughs> sploof sounds better. Sploof all over it's the place, a, girl. It's a whole thing that, like, because you know you got sued by Nike. Right. Well, did he though? I think that's part of the sp sploof, because I don't think he. I don't. Did he actually get sued? Uh, I, so I was. Did he for sure, or was it just kind of like? I mean, this he guy. Did. He's so. I don't know how much. I, I, I'm not. I'm gonna give him all the credit because I. I've seen. We've all kind of seen his come up, and I think that's why we all take to him. Whether you're into his music or not, he's just a genius marketer, and. Um. I love when all of this shit was unraveling with the, like, you know, the, like, super hardcore fundamentalist churches, you know, and he just was reposting that, like, all of it, you know, he knew 100% what he was doing. Um, Isn't it the Montero song that came out prior to this? I'm sure you saw that video. Right, like, broke the of internet. Course. That video was um, dope, by the way. The graphics it's in super it dope, like, next But, level. like, even, like, that's not my style. Like, I don't, like... You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's not my, like, aesthetic, like, that I would go to. It's a little too sci-fi for me. Mm -hmm. But, like, but I didn't care. I watched the video, like, 30 times, even though that usually wouldn't have been my vibe, because I'm like, this is so smart. And my, my little brother, out of all people, but once again, like, my family's from Iowa. Like, they're not super into music, a lot of them. My brother actually is really into rap, I will say. Which but one? um he, he was like, uh, we were talking, we were talking, uh, Sam, oh, okay. actually brother oh. um and sam we were talking about little Nas x and this is when this video came out and he was like he's such a little troll and i was like i know but that's why it works he like, is he and you know what he, there there he knows to how to be, use tiktok and all there that needs shit. to be a certain level of that to really be able to promote yourself you know you have to be kind of troll-esque mm -hmm. i think a lot of artists struggle with that actually they don't like trolling a lot of artists are kind of so introverted that they're like just don't pay attention to me like i'm gonna put this music out if you like it like you know, thanks for listening. You know, I, I tend to like shy more towards that side of things for sure. And so that's what's so cool to see about him because he's so open with how he got to where he was. Like when he started off with the uh, Old Town Road, 
He shoved uh-huh. it down people's throats. He made like a, like a thousand memes and just pushed them out all the time and was always pushing it on TikTok. And I think he's like the first real artist on TikTok. But that's what's so cool about him because honestly, we, we chose him. He was the first one you and I both thought of, like who is crushing it right now. And then I sat back and I was like, what are his, what are his songs? Like, I don't really, I don't really know because it, it really is so much more about his force as an artist. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and play mine right now. Have you heard this one yet? I have. Yeah, because I kind of did a little dive into him today. All so right. I was, so I, yeah. let's check out this one. And uh, I have a lot more to say on him as an artist, but let's listen to my pick from Lil Nas real quick off the ep here we go all right mute you. is it closure how do you say that there's a seven in it it's an upside down l it's i know i am <laughs> very smart yeah very smart i was just looking up to see who produced that and i don't know who any of the people are so yeah so i picked that one because <laughs> it's weird like you can hear the noise on the noise on it is so loud it's like i don't know super distorted yeah. and and, and weird it does and a weird like wow 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 has some wah, lo-fi wah, okay. exactly it has some lo-fi elements i like it because it has that that house sort of kick drum through it and anything with house uh-huh. music i i fuck with um but i actually yeah the producers are boy wonder who he's done some things on, I guess he's like, he's actually a Jamaican producer and he's Uh. on um, Drake's label. But he's worked with a lot of people, Rihanna, Eminem, Jay-Z, Nicki, Lana, Kanye, Kendrick. And then the other producer is this guy named Alan Ritter. And um, yeah, who is he? So he's done like he did the song "Controller" by Jake. Controller. Mm. Uh, he did some for Kanye and Rihanna as well. Nicki and Travis Scott. He did "Pick Up the Phone." Travis Scott. I don't know if you know that. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. yeah, like I just felt like that was like a very interesting take. Like take they just they put all that noise in there. Like it's present the whole time. But this is when I, this song actually is significant. The real reason why I chose it. Was because this is the so this is like his first like EP I guess, uh-huh. it came out in two thousand nineteen, and he did it like the last day of Pride Month, and he put out a tweet with something along the lines of you know you guys might not fuck with me after this too hard but this is me so this is about him really being you know fully embracing his uh, sexuality, um, and this is the start and now this is what he's known for. So I, the reason, the number one reason why I love Lil Nas X is because for years, years, I've been saying we need more male homosexuality in our media. There's a lot Uh of it. I mean, not to say that, you know, there hasn't been a struggle for anybody um, who is homosexual or any kind of sexual orientation. I think this, this box is really just beginning to open and the contents yeah. are spilling everywhere. But we needed, for a long time, somebody to normalize um, homosexuality for men. And I'm so glad that he's become this paragon of that. And he has just... Because he's such a cool person to really embody it because he looks so masculine. His yeah. build and everything about him, you know, he's just... He's very mm-hmm. masculine looking. And then he'll mm-hmm. do things like get on the stripping pole and like wear like super tall heels and he just gives no fucks and he just like forces it and i just feel like i just imagine him with just this sword just like slicing through this any sort of illusions that people had about uh homosexual men you know and he's just doing uh-huh. such a great job to finally like bring that to light dude totally and especially black homosexual men totally. like i'm not part of i i'm not a black person i did not grow up in the culture so I can only say so much but only from what I know based on what I've talked to in other friends that actually have grown up in the community mm-hmm. that it, it it tends to be not always like all things but it tends to be harder to be gay and black than it is to be gay and white mm-hmm. um just even in just a lot of the cultures it's just like it's just something that you know it's like it's harder to accept there's just something something maybe with masculinity I don't know what it is but like he has had to deal with 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 
his blackness, his gayness. I mean, it's a whole, like, it's a whole new persona that the world has never seen before. And we're forced to accept it because, like you said, he comes off so masculine. But then, like, the, I, one of my favorite parts in the last, the Industry Baby video is he's, he's outside bench pressing in a pink, uh, whatever you call them the jail right the jail outfits what do you i don't know I'm, I'm i'm horrible but anyway he's in this pink thing bench pressing and then like he gets up and he's like doing this little like dance which is which <laughs> and he is, goes Dee, he does the and then he goes, yeah i love it yeah i'm like what you can pull off any vibe like you don't have to fit any sort of stereotype you can literally be anything you want because it's you and that's what i love about it 2020 like, and 2021 honestly probably 2019 is when this social consciousness really started awakening to how, I mean, I think anything with religion, any relationship with a higher power and human sexuality. And I feel like those are the two things that we always try to compartmentalize and label because they're the most complex for us to understand. They are like the feminine energy in terms of, Mm -hmm. you know, intuitive and so much more complex than just putting them in categories. <laughs> um, yeah. And so Lil Nas X is doing such a great job because like how we've said, I think a lot of people, I think why it's really hard for men to explore their sexuality, maybe with other men with women, it's a lot easier. Cause, uh, you know, mm-hmm. first of all, sexuality is so much more fluid than, you know, we're willing to discuss, even though it is become much more of a discussion, but it, it I don't really, I don't really believe that anybody is a hundred percent straight. I really don't. Um, if they are to me, they're sus, but, or they're just like not maybe completely in tune with themselves. I don't know. <laughs> or they're not being honest or really thinking all of the thoughts. Maybe that's not true. Maybe there is somebody that's completely straight out there. I don't know. But it's becoming, it's becoming more more and more like people that say they're 100 percent straight are probably m- more of the minorities uh mm-hmm. that's what it seems like anyways um so i think that he's just doing a really good job of being of being breaking that barrier where men in particular to circle back to what i was saying the, the tequila is starting to hit a little bit i'm having a no, <laughs> i'm, I'm having a <laughs> these kinds of conversations you know like know. we need to have a stuffy conversation about music like you know I might as well be a little loose music conversations <laughs> can never be stuffy come on but anyways so you know true. for for females it is a little more easier because girl on girl has been portrayed in the media as hot it, and i think a lot of that is because we see naked women all the time all the time it's shoved yeah. in our faces it's so normal we don't see naked men at all that's why even most of the women i know are like dude penises gross man they're like the ugh they're like shrivel okay. little <laughs> dude i hate I, I hate to like go back to this but i recently just watched a documentary uh i should look up what it's called so i can plug it but I just watched a documentary on Netflix about the, like, basically the gender bias that exists in the film industry. Mm. And it's like, I can't remember what the statistic is for the, like, so lesbian porn is like the most watched porn on the internet, right? But the consumers of it. Really? That's a fact. Are like, like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I think it's I think it's the number one lesbian mm. porn. If not like top three or something. I can't remember what the exact statistic is, but the point is is that it's this much of a percentage of lesbian women that are watching it. It's like it's like all straight men. So the way that even that is portrayed is not how actual lesbian sex is. It's so stupid. Yeah. You know, it's just everything is like from the the lens of how males see women. Like like, the DP in a movie is, like, 95% of the time a man. So you're watching yourself through the lens of how a man sees you. Mm-hmm. So, like, this one actress was like, here I am thinking that I'm acting, and I watch it back, and I realize they're panning across my ass. Yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. Isn't that crazy? This is why we need more women in, like, in in bigger, Everything? more Everything. important roles. Yeah. Everything. In but government? Like, music in government? Film, Man, this yeah. is going to go a little bit off topic for just I a know. second. <laughs> pull me pull me back if it's too far. But it's something that I think about very often. Um, it's this uh, idea of feminine and masculine energy. And I personally believe the imbalance of this is what is why society is as messed up as it is. Because 
feminine energy or masculine energy is the like the aggressive the do the get things done the like break apart look at the individual pieces and it's important it's an important element of things figure it out but the feminine is the just like knowing without without knowing why it's the it's the, the intuition it's the digestive system it is um you know resting it is it's such an equal component to the masculine energy to really see the full picture and to be able to progress successfully forward but people have associated masculine energy with males which makes sense you know and if you look at the male anatomy it makes sense like they literally wear their genitalia uh like extroverted and, and ours is introverted we're feminine but every human being has equal parts feminine masculine energy and what's really like steered us in the wrong direction in society in my opinion is that we've associated feminine energy with weakness, you know? And that's, know. and that's the biggest thing is we look at feminine energy and you're weak. So to go back to male homosexuality, if you are a man and you experiment with another man, it's if you're a female and you experiment with another female, you're kinky. You're kinky, you're experimental, but if you're a man, you're gay. End of story, stamp on you, you're gay and you're weak because you're now gay. You know what I mean? See, and it's just like I, I dated someone, and I won't tell you who it is, obviously on the air. But oh, you, you should know, tell me. Wait, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna edit this okay. out. I'm gonna edit this out. Tell me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let a dude go down on him like at the beginning of college, and then like they like stopped kind of like at a certain point because he was like, okay, this isn't for me. But he tried it. Yeah. And like. I honestly thought it was cool, like, because he didn't, like, I mean, maybe he was lying to me, but, like, he told me, like, he couldn't go through with it because he thought, like, okay, like, now that this is actually happening, like, this isn't my vibe. But I love that he was open to even, I don't know, I think that takes more Same. of a man, I'm in my with opinion. You. I think boys who kiss boys are sexy. I do because too. it shows that they're 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 com- they're comfortable in that like idea that is well first of all it shows that they are also divorced from this uh, crazy sort of reality that society tries to force on us that just really isn't real and that's why you and I really like Lil Nas X because he's br- he's personally destroying all those and he's so big right now so all of this new generation this is the first this is the first like dose of like male male on male sexuality that they're getting where this they're show where we grow up with what media portrayed to us was males who are gay are weak and feminine or whatever and he's literally showing you the exact opposite that you can possess that but you can also be very masculine you don't have and, and there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with being a a feminine a more like a uh, flamboyant gay either like i have many gay Dude. gay male friends who are more flamboyant and i have some that are the opposite that you would you would never know like never some, know. some some of my male gay friends you know right away they're more flamboyant they whatever they right. possess a certain thing and then some you would have no idea you know and it and, uh-huh. and that's the thing too it's like that in and of itself shatters that conception that we have that you know all all gay men look a certain way act a certain way it's just not true sexuality is no. so much more fluid and like the, the little Nas X video I love one of my other favorite parts just to, it kind of goes along with this is that like he looks so fucking jacked and gangster because he's got like a full grill and he's and he's got his abs are just fucking uh, and he's walking down the thing with these two gay guys i don't know if you noticed the way that they did they made it look like a little tiny dick but it was just the inside of his pockets oh i don't think i see that i need to rewatch it he's got two do a close-up and it's the inside of his pocket with a little dick and he grabs on each one of them they zoom out and it's him in the middle of these two guys who are supposed to be prisoners but like gay as hell. But one of them on the right is wearing a do rag and is like way less femme. And the guy on his left has lip gloss on. Love and it. he's like looking at him like like mm, like so into it. But like it's just showing the spectrum right there. And then there's little Nas in the middle, just like being a fucking man. And Jack Harlow like, straight, like, right? Yeah, exactly. Love it. It's beautiful. It's it's so beautiful. Like Jack Harlow's uh, like making out with the hot police officer woman in the back see, cell I love or whatever it. during I, his part. I love yeah. it. Like the only part of that mu- that music video that I didn't like was when 
Jack Harlow had his little spotlight and the girl comes and like he's like she's like making out with him and he just like the police it's, officer That's it's like it so is, yeah. overly se- they <laughs> so overly sexualize her to be like I'm I'm straight I swear <laughs> like I was like chill bro like you know what I mean like we get it my favorite line of his in that whole rap is though he goes I didn't peek in high school I'm just just up here getting cuter <laughs> what <laughs> I didn't peek in high school I'm just out here getting cuter all right <laughs> <laughs> he's not even that cute but he's not even that the line's cute i love it i love it um anyways yeah he's he's changing the game for sure and like i will say like to start out with him that's a big act to follow because although i love all these other artists yeah we could make we could honestly make this whole episode about lil nas and actually we we've talked way too much about it so i actually i'm gonna like uh propose a motion to maybe cut out one of the artists. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we originally had Lil Nas. uh, We have (coughs) Doja Cat, Dua Lipa, and Billy. I say we talk about Doja and Billy. We're going to cut out Dua. Sorry, there's not a lot to say about her. She's dope. We love her. It's cool. We're going to cut her out. Uh, So let's let's get on to our our Doja songs. Um, We're going to move on to our next artist. This is Caitlyn's pick. And you picked so high. So let's go Uh ahead and play that now. All right. So why did you pick this song out of all the judges? So first first of all, I just had like a a moment. I was like, wait, how old is this bitch? Because when, sorry, how old is this girl? This wonderful woman woman who is very talented. Um, uh, But honestly, because this song... This was 2014. 2014. Our... Uh-huh. You want to know remember? something funny? I haven't revealed to you what my song is yet, but you and I both picked a song off the Purr album, her first shit that she came out with in 2014. I, I like I I fuck with her new stuff, but like I don't know. Like there's something really special about this record, and like what really got me thinking about it was I came across an old playlist. I had made. Remember when I played the High Watt in Nashville? We played that show together, and like, right? Was that the same? I, mean, I think I played it a few times, but it okay. was it was one of the shows. It was one when I came out in the pasties. Okay. Or the not the pasties, but the maybe it was the Down pasties. Boy? I had the was big fur Down jacket. Boy? What was this Down Boy? I, I, yeah, it was like that generation yeah, right. ish. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I think Brian Tool helped me play the show and all. The, anyways, but like. The way they they let me have a playlist that I could play because it was my show, mm-hmm. and so like between all of the acts, I got to play my own like DJ set basically, and on that set was No Police, and I was like, Love Fuck, that song. I thought about that, no and I remember sitting in my ex boyfriend's place in East Nashville, and I just remember being obsessed with her and playing that video over and over. She's like sitting in the middle of this like enchanted lake, like on top of like a like. I don't even know. It was like some weird thing. She's like meditating, and she's like, "You gave me so hard." Oh, I don't think I've ever was seen like, the cool. video. Yeah, and I don't even remember how I found it. These were back in like this was back in the day before Spotify playlists were pumping. You know what I yeah, mean? It right. was like back in the SoundCloud days. But we were and both into her. I found it. We were both into her, and I remember. So yeah, she was really young because I remember like she was like a teenager when I found her. Twenty five right now. Yeah, this makes that That's makes sense what I was because trying to get at because when I I remember when she, when she came into like my awareness, she, I found a few things about her. She was one of the first people to like really start taking a hold of this like live like Instagram live stuff because I remember she mm-hmm. was the only person who I would watch their live videos of and it was always entertaining. She'd just like be in her bedroom just like doing some weird shit. Yeah. Not giving a really, fuck and literally like doing weird makeup shit and being like, <laughs> like I remember making seeing, ugly I remember seeing a, uh, a video that she did. I don't even know who she was with or what it was, but basically she just smoked a blunt with some guy in a car and he puts on a mixtape and has her start freestyling and she crushed it, crushed it. I was like, damn, this girl is special. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to play my song, and it is from... Beautiful? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's from the exact same album, Purr. So let's go ahead and play that right now. (laughs) (laughs) Had you heard that one? The line literally made me laugh. She says, 
I'm cutie patootie, but don't mistake that for hoochie. <laughs> yeah. She, okay, honestly, she has so many good lines in the song. This is why I chose it, because this is when, this is what made me realize, like, Doja Cat is a freaking poet, dude. She says, what, what my, I remember the line that, like, got stuck in my head where she was like, uh, a little bit of rouge on the cheeks, bronze little bombshells cruise by the beach. I was like, dude, <laughs> that's poetic <laughs> as fuck. I, I love it. She's and she so says, cool. she says, cute from the cooch to my cute curls. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> dude, She's that's great. why, like, it, it tripped me out when I, like, so here's another example of someone who is, honestly, the, all the people that we're talking about are Gen Zers. Right. Mm-hmm. She's twenty. She's no. She's twenty five. She's millennial. She's she's on the cusp. She's on the cusp. She's on the cusp. Um. But anyways, like she is one of the first artists, like from 2019, 20 in, into twenty twenty, with like say so and like even songs like cyber sex that never really got huge. Mm-hmm. They were giant on TikTok, and it was literally not even. Her singing a lot of it. It was just like the the intro from the beginning. That's right. The and, do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Bah, bah, bah. yeah but then like right. some of. But then there there were also some that were the like, ah things you do. Bah, 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 bah. Like there was some of that as well. But like a lot of her media is geared towards these apps like TikTok and YouTube and like all of that shit. Like that's and you know how she blew up again. Because she kind of blew up, but, like, not in the way that they wanted, obviously, when she got signed back in 2014, is when she did the Moo video. I don't know that. Moo! You know, remember that? So she came out with a new, a whole new record in 2018, and there was a song on it, like, called, like, Moo. Like, bitch, I'm a cow, like, Moo! <laughs> and the video is her literally, like, dressed as a cow, and she's just like, Maybe Moo! I do and, like, vaguely remember this, actually. It started all of these gifts and shit. Cause it was like, bitch, I'm a cow, bitch, I'm a cow. I don't something, I just say meow, bitch, I'm a cow, bitch, I'm a, and she was just like, moo. Okay, <laughs> get it, Doja. That's what she knew that like, like she knew, she's one of these artists that knows and doesn't care and will do anything in order to like get herself back on the map. She knows how social media but works. it doesn't feel inauthentic to me. It never Not has, at all. except for... I will say this because this is the reason I've always loved her because I feel like she utilizes the tools of social media to connect and it's always felt real with me. Like I sniff out Mm -hmm. inauthenticity immediately. I'm like allergic to it. But with her, it's never felt inauthentic. But very recently I saw something that I was like, Mm. Doja? What? Like also my Russian friend thought her name was Doha and now I can't like unhear it. I'm always like, Doha? No, she posted... Doha! (laughs) She posted this bikini pic recently i wonder if it's still up dude is it on instagram yeah she posted this pic on instagram and it was so very clearly edited and it was like her and it and it just look oh yeah it still is you can see it it's the third one up right now it's this one right here uh-huh. oh is it like is it like tuned like like yeah oh what do you call it i'm really bad with this shit i've never used it in my life what uh face tune is that what you call it i don't know like don't... face like where like you edit your body and shit i don't know is that i'm what sure you mean? i'm sure there's a, a zillion apps that that do this but it's very no but that's what i mean is it that, that you mean in that way is what i'm yeah, saying like, like she edited her body yeah maybe she didn't maybe she just lost a lot of weight but to me it looks very clearly edited like, especially when you see music videos of, of her and stuff, because she's not a stick. She's, like, thicker. She's not a stick, you know? But she's beautiful. She's yeah. not a stick, though. And that picture is very... Oh. And I saw that, and I was like, oh, no, Doja, don't leave us. Like, no, we need you. Come back. Like, that, like, disappointed me. And and I also was like, I mean, this is my thing, though. I love reading the comments. Like, you will always find me in the comment section, like, what are people saying? And everyone, like, kind of, like pretty much had the same thing they were like whoa this is very clearly edited like what is going on uh so i don't know that kind of sucks because that's Um, what we're attracted to i think like what we have so far in common with both the artists that we've said that are killing it in the pop game right now is is the fact that they are so forcing who they are on the public you know and that's always been her vibe and she's just so effortlessly 
if we had more time to talk about all the people, like you would include people like Lizzo, like Lizzo actually during the pandemic, <clears throat> like she found her own way. Like she was literally like meditating and like doing shit with crystals on live and like making everyone feel all body positive and happy with themselves, no matter how shut in they felt. And like, I'm just like, the, there are a lot of people that are like so authentically themselves now, which is so great. We are As honestly a child that really grew up in the lucky. 90s with Christina Aguilera. I was going to say Spears. that. We are so lucky to be <coughs> in this generation now where people are really embracing that. Because, man, I can't even imagine, like, our grandmothers, our grandmothers, like, light a candle for them. Because I remember I have so many conversations with mine. Like, she's 91 now. And I'll, I'll have these conversations with her, and I'll just be like, you know, Grandma, like, did you imagine having six kids? And she'd be like, honey, birth control is not a thing. You know what I mean? No. I was like, that, to me, I was like, oof, jeez. You didn't even have an option, you know? Yeah, and I, and I kind of had, like, a conversation with my mom about this, too, because, you know, like, my grandma, a lot of women of that generation, I think – People can be like, oh, a lot of one of the big complaints, this is very personalized, but it's like, oh, they like act like victims or whatever. And I'm like, but can you blame them? What attention did they ever have? <coughs> they raised kids and that was their life. Like, you know, it's it's kind of just a symptom of that. Like, you know, give me any kind of acknowledge me in any sort of way other than just, you know, keeping you alive and feeding you and being your life source. Like, I can't I can't imagine Women, women of our, you know, our ancestors and women, like, just the respect that they never got that they deserved is so sad. It my wasn't mom, that my long mom ago. even, my mom even, classic example. I look at her life and what she went through and what she sacrificed for us, and I'm like, you will never get the credit that you deserve. I tell her all the time, I'm like, mom, let me write a book about your life and what you went through. And she's so private. She's like, that sounds like my worst nightmare. And I'm like, cool. I'll wait till you, till you cook. <laughs> By the way, disclaimer, I don't have COVID. I took a test. I'm just getting over a dry cough. Uh, <laughs> You've been hitting the jewel. For anyone that's me. watching this on YouTube, she's been hitting the jewel the whole time. That's why she's coughing. <laughs> the whole time. Just the last hour since the alcohol kicked in. Okay. <laughs> so we should probably get to our last artist, though. Yeah. So we decided to Billy? go for, yeah, Billy. Okay, so we're going to play your Billy song first, which is. I don't even know what your Billy song is yet. Oh, yeah. You'll laugh at it because you. Okay, uh... don't even tell me. I want to be surprised. It's the last one. Okay, so we're going to play your fun. Billy song first. This is When the Party's Over by Billy Eilish. Ugh. <laughs> Dude, it's so good. It is very good. What's up, Wiener Breath? Oh, how cute are you? <laughs> hey, you just sit down and chill. No. Follow follow uh, Walter on social media. He's more Walter popular with than the weenie. He's, he's more popular famous. than both of us combined. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is this is my uh, choice for the Billie Eilish song. Okay, cool. <laughs> so that was my pick. Why'd you pick Dude, yours? She came out with that at the beginning of the pandemic, right? It was like she 2020. Did. Right? I remember that. And it for me, I chose that one because it had very, it had like the lo-fi vibes, which I've been into for years now. And like they they mm -hmm. definitely capitalized off that because they even did like the anime sort of thing for the video, which is definitely yeah. a lo-fi type thing. But what's funny is I mm -hmm. was gonna pick that song. And you sent it to me when I was asking you for your Billy picks, and you were like, "This song reminds me of you," and it's funny because like a melody you would write. It's funny you because I mean? when she came out, and I listened to her stuff, and I listened to it probably, probably like the same that I listened to Dua Lipa. Honestly, like when it was out, I never like dove into her catalog and was like, "Wow!" Actually, a, a few months ago, I finally did, and I was like, "Yeah, she's. I get it. She's worth all the hype." But, mm -hmm. um, but I remember when she first came out, I was like, honestly, we are very similar. I would have written that. I sound like her. She sounds like me. I'm older. <laughs> right. yeah. I... Um, but yeah, so I was like, that's very interesting. But like, so, um, sometimes like I'm like Dr. Jekyll and, and Mr. Hyde sometimes when I write, cause I either sound like that, the, what she embodies, or I go like the full belty 
soul kind of vibe. But yeah, so I like her. Like if I didn't like her, I wouldn't like uh, myself. But to be honest with you, I'm a way bigger fan of her brother and his production. I think well, he's so, so dope. Something I was thinking about when I was like looking up stuff today and preparing and whatever. Or I'm putting my dog down because he's distracted by it. Bye, Wally. Oh, Daniel. Daniel, your counterpart is coming into the room. Daniel, you. make use okay. of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he could hear um, me. So, so like Billy. So what's hilarious? I don't. I don't think you realize this because I feel like you would have texted me if you would have realized this. But Billy's record comes out tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah, nice. it comes out tomorrow. Like the full thing. She's released a few singles. I haven't um, heard her most recent single NDA, but I heard Power. Right? It's called Power. Yeah, Try I didn't love to... it. Did you like her? Uh, her Power is that what it's called? Yeah, I like it, and I hate. I hate to talk okay. shit. I, like I, no, I, it's I personal honestly, preference. Like, no, I know, but it's like I, I hate. It's like I do like it, and I listen to it, and it's lovely. I think I'm. I honestly feel like I'm part of the problem because she had such a banger of a first record that like I'm giving like I, I you know what I mean like I'm setting myself up for like something specifically when it doesn't matter what it is like she's on her own journey she's a young artist like she could come out with something that sounded completely different and I should love it just because it's good you know no, what I mean shouldn't. Um, I just was expecting something a little different like it was just um she stripped her, her shit down so much which actually is like as you know like that's my root is like playing behind a piano and just like very bare bones like that's what I love ultimately like that's what I come from but I don't know I just kind of like with Lil Nas how Lil Nas X how he just kind of seems to like even though he's not putting out a lot whenever he puts out something it tends to be just getting bigger and like cooler and like more of a breakout than before and I don't know if that's fair to compare the two because they're so fucking different and did you see the Billy uh, doc on Apple TV? Okay. So so it was a good doc. And honestly, I thought it was so sweet and honest of her because she, I don't remember where I saw this interview, but she was like, honestly, it's a little embarrassing to look back on some of it because think Cold about hair. it. She's, she's 19. Yeah. So when this shit was being filmed, she was a, she's already a young hooligan still at 19. Think about who you were when you were 16 17 you know and she's like so I look back on a lot of that footage because everything she did was filmed and like she wasn't think and she's also like a not I don't give a fuck type of person so she just kind of said whatever and she was like looking back on it like it's a little embarrassing but it was who I was at the time so I think it's important to put that out there but that being said I thought what was really interesting out of the whole thing was a conversation that she had with Phineas saying I don't like to write like she doesn't really like it. Like she, I, I, I can, I, I'm going to butcher whatever she said. So I'm not going to quote her, but I'm going to just say how I felt like as far as me as an artist with the connection of whatever she said, as far as not loving to write, but loving to sing. Um, she, I think she feels a certain pressure, right. With writing and her brother, she was like, she just said, you're, you're a genius. Like, you that's what you're good at like you just that's what you live and breathe every day and so like it's funny how someone who was on top of the world like Billie Eilish still feels that like pressure and that imposter syndrome of like what like I can't do this like who am you know what I mean and like and they show this is the most amazing actual part of the entire documentary they wake her up in the middle of the night, her parents. I saw I saw a clip of this, and she's like, did Phineas they, win? Yes. Yeah. They wake her up. She's literally just a teenager. She's, like, tired, and she doesn't fucking go away. I'm tired, and I'm grumpy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And they're, like, telling her about her nomination. She's, she's like, that's great. And she's like, did Phineas win? It's like all she fucking cared about. But you know what? On a personal, on a personal aspect, that has got to be her greatest asset, though, because she. Yeah. I think that's what keeps her so grounded and real. And I haven't heard her most recent single, NDA. I haven't heard it. I actually haven't either. But I heard uh, Power. I remember, and I, I really, honestly, I thought it was great. I remember listening to it, and like, I didn't have it on repeat, but it was one of those songs that I heard once, and I was like, mm, I get it. And I think it's important because I think she's using her platform to be like, hey, this is what's happening. Because <laughs> if, if anyone's listening and they haven't heard that song, it's very clearly about 
still how men in the music industry use their power um, negatively on mm -hmm. women, especially. And the melody's great, and I oh, like and, that they strip it down. I was going to say, I mean, musicianship-wise, mm -hmm. it's incredible. It is, yeah. It's like, a great it's song. very, like, the melody is so good. The chord progression is beautiful. Like, it's all there. I guess I just, like I said, probably unfairly, I was expecting some, like, big, because remember, right before the pandemic happened, she wrote the theme song for the James Bond movie, and her and Phineas performed it at the Oscars. Oh, I didn't know and it that. was. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's called, I think it's No Time to Die is what it's called okay. or something like that. It's super cinematic and beautiful and Billie Eilish meets orchestra and oh, just cool. per perfect, but like very slow and whatever. And I guess one thing, I, I think I was just expecting like some sort of like grand progression. Yeah. But like she's still another so artist young. that I love that doesn't make grand progressions is Lana Del Rey. She yeah. just sticks with what she's really good at, which is like... Mm -hmm you know, songs that make you want to cry that have amazing poetry behind them. That's Billy. Yeah. Billy was clearly influenced by Lana growing up. I mean, I mean, La like, Lana has like a lot of elements though. She does like the short films. She was always editing her own stuff, putting her own things. Like yeah. she's like the full encompassed artist for sure. But mm -hmm. yeah, I understand, but she's also so young. You know, there was this thing that Dave Grohl actually said about Billie Eilish and he called her the Kurt Cobain of our generation. Which is, like, a pretty big statement from somebody that was in the band in Nirvana. Who was in the fucking band. Like, are you joking? Yeah. But I kind of... That's a lot of pressure for a little kid like yeah, that, though. Yeah, like, but I get I, it I at the can, same time. Like, you can I, say boo-hoo, whatever, like, you know, first world problems. But I'm just saying, she is a kid still. Well, you know what? The, like, biggest, the biggest impact... Yeah, of course. I think, And I think a lot of people, like, understand that, too. And uh, maybe this is just my perspective, but I feel like a lot of people have this energy towards like we need to protect her because uh, we do we really actually Justin Bieber was the first person that came out and said something about that we really, I want her we to really do it. we really do need to protect her we need to protect all of it I mean honestly like I'm so happy to see the internet finally get rid of canonizing celebrities just like making them into these saints it's so it's so disturbing it's it's a part of our culture as human beings that needs to disintegrate and I think it's finally happening because there's so many people who are celebrities and nowadays I mean you can have 5 million 15 million uh followers on Instagram and I'll have no idea who you are dude it, yes and like I mean so I I'm I've not done like a ton of research on it, but from what I understand from the couple of headlines that I've seen, Simone Biles, mm -hmm. who is, is that how you say her last name? Biles? Simone Biles, the gymnast, uh, the U.S. Olympic gymnast, she withdrew from the Olympics mental to take health. care of her mental health. Yeah. That's like, awesome. this is, this is like the time that we're living. We're being honest about shit. Like, this is why people like Marilyn Monroe fucking died so young because they're just expected to be a robot. And just, like, be fueled up and be perfect all yeah. the time when we're just human beings that need to take breaks and need to... And and I think that was kind of the original appeal about Billie, you know? She wasn't, like, over-sexualizing mm -hmm. herself. She wore very baggy clothes. She kind of kept mm -hmm. a distance and just tried to make it all about the music and the artistry. That's, I think, was the original appeal. And then, of course, like, as soon as her image started, like, changing... and I think The Vanity that's... Fair... Yeah, and, and then, photos, but then everyone's remember, like, "Oh, you're showing your boobs now." Of course, you would do this. It's just like what Lil Nas X did to us after Old Town Road. Just rope all the kids but, in, and then just throw your sexuality at them. But like, I remember really? even before she did the Vogue shoot, there were like these oh, was images. It Vogue? Was it Vogue? I don't know. I think it was Vogue. Yeah, but there were these images okay. that that circled around of her just living like everyday life, like going grocery shopping or something. Sorry. And she was wearing a, <laughs> she was wearing a tank top and, and like leggings. So you could see Daniel, her whole. Daniel, can you refill mine? Sorry. Daniel, can you refill mine? <laughs> I'm so over disrespectful. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you didn't know, uh, Caitlin has an Italian butler named Daniel. <laughs> she just yeah. gets him to fetch her drinks. His name is Daniel. And he just makes me he's her, he's her in house Italian butler. And she just says, Allora, Daniel. <laughs> Refill my Aperol. A very Okay, sorry. So, um, before she did the Vogue shoot, 
there were these images mm-hmm. that circulated around of her just doing like grocery shopping or something in a normal attire like tank top and leggings and she got so body shamed like oh you have the body of like a middle-aged mom who's addicted to wine or something blah 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 and it was just like damn like ugh you just read she those and a you're a 19 year old girl yeah like what the fuck dude but also thank god that she's living at least in the generation where like there's a lot of people that are, that are going to come back on people like that mm-hmm. and destroy them. Absolutely. Like, you know, we have a generation of, like, people that are, like, there's still going to be those awful people out there, but at least, like, the internet exists and we have these communities of people that can come together and, like, call people out like that. Like, literally, if, if you comment something like that on Billie Eilish's fan page, they will come for you. It's true. Like, you see that in, you see that in TikTok, too, like, anything. Like, TikTok is so the people have the voice if you look at the comments mm-hmm. it'll be like yo this isn't cool like don't don't say shit like that you know what i mean like don't come on here and say that and people the people now are like regaining the power through the internet like where we really have the voice to like be able to say what is right and what is wrong and it's mm-hmm. it's really it's really powerful man and you know what we are such a we are the last generation to really be able to appreciate the power of it because we grew up before the internet and after. So we've seen mm-hmm. both sides of it. We've seen the power it has to completely demolish any sort of thought pattern. Speaking of that, I'm interested to know what you, how you feel about being part of that generation that is so in the middle. Like, because I, I go back and forth sometimes thinking, like, if I grew up in the generation when moms ran Instagram accounts for their kids, mm-hmm. like... I probably would have like been this crazy childhood star because like I just like that's just, that my that was my vibe like I if I had the resources and I wasn't just doing local dinner theater shit and I actually had the access to the internet like I probably would have had a lot more opportunities as a kid but do I would I really want that isn't is isn't it better maybe that I or I'm not not isn't it sorry I don't want to set it up to make you agree with me. I'm saying, is it better to have the experience of back in the day when like literally people had pagers to get a hold of each other and like to be able to experience that part of life when things were a little bit more calm and like not so self self obsessive, which is what the internet also does to us is a result of social media. Or would you have maybe be interested to see what it was like when you were younger if you did have the access of like Instagram and TikTok to get yourself out there at a younger age so that you could maybe have had more opportunities at a younger age? It's true that it do- there are is a lot more access to a vast number of opportunities. Um, I I'm always of the mindset that like it is what it is you know what I mean and yeah I, 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 I honestly I feel I feel very privileged but if this... you could change it would you no absolutely not I feel very privileged in the yeah. situation that I'm in of course like for me um growing up my my family was not I mean you could always you could even say like there you know there's people that are the generation even before us the Britney Spears and the Christina Aguilera's they had their parents being stage moms putting them in these productions my mom was the exact opposite. My mom was always like, listen, the arts, no. Education where it's at. And that came from the fact that my mom was a single mom for a, a period of time. And so she very much so put the emphasis mm-hmm. on education. And she drilled that into my brain. And, you know, of course, like, when I was growing up, I used to think, like, ugh, like, she screwed me, you know? she Like, she never let me do these competitions or let me be this or that. I could have whatever. But... Now I look at it and I'm like, she really made me what I am, where I am equal parts an artist and always a student. Like, I'm obsessed with learning, and I got that from my mom. Like, some of my earliest memories are sitting on her lap while she was putting herself through college, raising three kids, highlighting her textbook, you know, and I would go into my little, like, books, my children books, and highlight them as well, like, wanting to be like her. What a great example. And, and I see that now in my journey through music production like I have a stack of books on studio technique and and mastering uh mixing with your mind and all these kind of things and and that's such a part of me that I wouldn't have had if I was just thrown into it 
uh, all about like performance. Like I'm not just a performance artist. It is a big part of me. I know it's a part of you too. Like we both love that, but we're so much more because of the circumstances where we've, that we've came out of. So no, I wouldn't change anything. I think that it's all led to exactly where we are now. And there's nothing, there's nothing like us. We have like such a unique thing to offer. I think that of our generation is very special because we do have such a depth of perspective from seeing how the world was before and after the internet. And I think that we are like the last ones that got to experience that. And Mm -hmm. we're the only ones that really know what life is like before and after. And so we're the only ones that really know how to keep that balance and why it's important. So, and like I said, I I, I still love to just write in journals. Like I'm I'm the same way. I have a planner and I I can't, I can't, there's certain things that I cannot grab hold of technology. Yeah. We're the same way. I have, I have my planner. I have to write in it. And it's actually not the best thing because I've lost it a couple times and my life is literally screwed because <laughs> I don't have it backed up because I'm like that. But there's something, about, there's something about pen to paper that just feels so much more real. I'm actually very naturally resistant to technology. It's hard because my, my living is basically off of, off of technology and software like as a as a music producer but i every now and then i'm just like uh, i don't know like I, i'm i'm never i know you have one and all of my friends and family members do but like i will never own an apple watch it is just not my thing i don't know i just can't imagine i know i can't imagine like having a computer on my wrist at all times even my phone like i get so much shit for this like whatever it's cracked it's broken i leave it places i lose it often i don't like to be super attached to it and and i'm the same way with any social media when i find myself being like oh i'm just opening the app without thinking twice then i feel like it owns me and i don't own it and i delete it and i'm just like you're gonna take three days break and just move away from it and that's just kind of how i have to live and that for me personally is a good balance like i have to be connected to the 3d world like out in nature, my feet in the grass. Like I have to have that element of me to feel balanced. That's 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 respectable. I'm I'm not. I mean, I am that way, but not as hardcore that way as I am when it comes to like writing. Like when it comes to writing, I have to like like. There's something I can't just get on Microsoft Word and just like little little. Like I can't do that. Like I so for example. Microsoft Word heard write. you. Did you hear that? It was like, <laughs> it, 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 Bill Gates hears me. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, <laughs> but like, I love to write things out. Like, so for example, I had to write the finale song for this movie that is coming out this Christmas, and so and it, and it was very tailored to a story, right? So this is a little more specific, but. Regardless, like, I like to write out, like, I wrote the, all these different elements, like parents passing, wine, vineyards, things, because I think one of the biggest goals as a songwriter is to take your listener to a place. Mm-hmm. Like, the more visual you can be with your lyrics, like, the more specific and less, like, metaphorical and whatever, like, to literally, like, talk about the glass of wine sitting on the table and the way that it smells and... The, and 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 the way that that it feels and you know like to, to do touch but to, to bring the five senses into the song right, exactly. is like the most important thing right so i just wrote this a long list what i said you're a storyteller a raconteur sure sure that's, i mean that's i, sure, I have sure. learned this honestly from from other people that i've written with like this isn't like my own knowledge it's just like what i've learned from writing with other people Um, especially like these guys that I've written these pop songs with, that's something that Jordan would always say was like, take your list, your listener to a place where they can hear it. They can feel it. They can smell it. They can touch it and taste it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, So like, right. I wrote all these different things like that brought you to a place. And then I would start crossing them off as I would use them. But then also (laughs) that's one more thing, but then like this, I like, when I can't figure out like a, a lyric, right? I like writing it out and then literally just leaving like a blank. Like I know, I know this is it. I know this is the vibe, but it just needs one word. And I'm just going to write this down. I'm going to leave a blank and I'm going to let it sit there for three days. And I'm going to walk by it every day. And I'm going to look at it. Really? And like, That's so funny. I like that. 
<laughs> until it makes sense and it's perfect and it feels like a real lyric and not just something that like Caitlin came up with. That's like, cool. I re- I honestly really appreciate the energy that you put into your lyrics and I think it really shows. I love when you call me and you and you tell me like what you wrote and you're like check out these lyrics cuz I I feel like I'm one of those people too. I think I started as a poet very young. I was like seven years old when I started writing poetry. Words in general have always been super cool to me. So I listen to lyrics for sure. So you're Mm -hmm. the only other artist that I have that puts that much attention on them, actually. So I always love having these conversations where you're like, ready? Wait for this lyric. And then you tell me and I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. (laughs) So that's great. Well, I feel like this just needs to be the conclusion. I I have a lot of editing to do to try to make this more concise. (laughs) Caitlin and I love to have these long ass conversations with each other. We could talk for like eight hours, so we we won't we won't do that to you. It was an honor having (laughs) you on my radio talk show. You are such a such a lovely person and such a talented writer, and you have so much to contribute to the world. And it's just. An honor to be your friend. Thank you for being here. I love you so much. I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> Kisses to to your butler Daniel and and Wally the Wiener. And my little weenie. <laughs> Thanks. Hopefully we can all see you soon. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Kisses from literally across the country. Literally, I can see the sun is just setting now, and it's been set here for a good four hours. <laughs> yep. So okay, yeah. we'll see you soon. Ciao, darling. Love you, babe. Love you. Ciao, ciao.